Okay. When were you born? Uh, 1951. What, where were you born in? I was actually born in Oklahoma City, but after uh, six months, my family moved to Whittier, California. Okay. Well, what was your opinion about the Vietnam War? Um, well, in my family, my dad actually enlisted. He was a, a pilot in the Navy, um, and you know, he, he told me that was a, a World War II was a war with nationalistic feelings. Mm -hmm. um, when the Vietnam War came around, at first it wasn't even a war; it was a police action. Uh, it was us going over and kind of more or less sticking our noses into other people's business where it didn't belong. There was no threat to the United, immediate threat to the United States. There was no nationalistic feelings. Um, and in fact, uh, th there were a lot of people that were not only protesting the war, but going to extremes to avoid going to the war with the draft and everything. They were going to Canada, they were just uh, doing, uh, burning their draft cards in protest. Um, and my dad actually told me that, you know, uh, you know, the decision would have had to have been mine if I had gotten drafted, um, whether he would have supported me going or not, you know, uh, because, there just wasn't that nationalistic feeling about that type of deal. Okay. Uh, what did you feel about the civil rights movement? Uh, you know, that, oddly enough, I was completely kind of uh, sort of oblivious to that, although, you know, uh, you know, with the assassination of Martin Luther King, uh, uh, you know, and that being a, a significant event, uh, where I lived and where I was uh, kind of from and things, there wasn't really any civil rights prejudice uh, or other things that way. So, you know, I, I wasn't prejudiced. I wasn't in a situation where there were prejudice being brought forth, and so I was, I was kind of just really out of the loop on that one. Okay. How did you and your family feel about Lyndon B. Johnson? Um, I, again, uh, my parents weren't necessarily overly political. Um, I think uh, I I believe he was a, the president that more or less got us in to, or he was the president while we were involved in the Vietnam War and things. Um, and so that didn't really make him very popular, I know. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just, I just don't remember him as being a, a, a very popular president that way. What do you like remember about the Watergate? Watergate was just a situation where Nixon got caught doing a, probably the same type of subversive activities that everybody else had. Uh, you know, all the other politicians are, you know, finding out what other people are doing and, and things like that. And so, whereas I don't think, you know, he was necessarily guilty of anything that anybody else wasn't doing, he just got caught doing it. And I, I think at the time, uh, more was being made of the cover-up than what he actually did, that he went to uh, to lengths to cover up what he did, uh, and I think people saw that as even worse than uh, him kind of spying on the, the Democrats. Did you attend any pro-war or anti-war protests? No. 
No. No. I, even I, uh, during the time I was at uh, University of California, Irvine, and we were just little sweet Orange County, innocent students. We weren't like the UC Santa Barbara or the Cal Berkeley or, or a lot of the other students. Um, you know, uh, and again, I was I was at that time very involved in in water polo and athletics, and so I was fairly oblivious to all of that, other than hearing about it. Um, well, could you tell me about the process protest involving African American and civil rights movement? Other than, other than hearing about it, you know, and hearing about the protests and the marches and things, again, where I was brought up um, in Whittier, uh, we were a predominantly white, and community, um, there were, you know, some Hispanics, but, you know, I don't think we had any Afro-American uh, individuals around, and, you know, that I was, uh, I wasn't around it, I wasn't involved in it, and I really had no prejudice myself or, or reason to be prejudiced. Thank you so much for okay. yeah, taking your time and Great. helping us out. Thank, Thank you. you. In November 5th, 1945. Where were you born? I was born in Montreal, Canada. How many siblings did you have? Eight. Um, what was your opinion about the Vietnam War? <sighs> well, because I left Canada, when we left Canada to come to live in the United States, I had an opinion about it. And I was um, against the Vietnam War because it really wasn't a war, it was a conflict. And I didn't think that American young men would, should have to go and sacrifice their lives for this conflict. Did anyone in your family participate in the Vietnam yes. War? Yes. My brother did, and he was killed in 1966. I'm sorry. Did you know, um, how did you feel about it? horrible. Um, it, uh, sometimes I still, every time Memorial Day starts coming, which is coming soon, I sometimes, I, I lose my emotional control and I can't even talk about it. I'm going to be okay, I think, today. Sometimes it's still, and it happened in 1966. It's just something, um, a family does not recover. It just can't recover uh, completely. Um, yes. What did your parents think about the war? Oh. Well, my father didn't want him, to, Danny, to go, but see, back in those days, someone who was 18 was, you know, could be drafted, and he was. He was 21 when he was killed. He was drafted at the age of 20, and uh, they were still stuck. Uh, some people, they had, every year they had something, some different kind of program to, to recruit uh, troops, but that year it was the draft, and he was drafted. Um, in 1965, around November, I think, right around my birthday, I remember that. How old were you? I, when he was killed, I was 20. Mm -hmm. He was 21. Mm -hmm. what, um, what did you think about the war? I was always against it, and even more so. Um, I had an opportunity to at least be a volunteer at the Veterans Hospital in Long Beach because uh, that's where I lived in those days, and uh, I would kind of like go visit people that there's the, the, a lot of veterans that were there didn't have family in the area, so it was nice to have like friends to come yeah. see them, you know, that were permanently disabled for, forever, you know, arms shot off, legs shot off, you know, that sort of thing. So. Okay, we're moving on to the civil rights movement. Uh, what did you feel about the civil rights movement? Oh, I remember the first time I ever heard about it was in um, 19, I should have heard about it sooner, but I didn't. It was in August. Uh, that I really heard about was in August of 1963 when Martin Luther King did his uh, I Have a Dream speech. And I really was so proud of him and I thought, what a brave man. I had read about Rosa Parks. I just didn't 
get it because living in Long Beach, it didn't. It was, I guess, hard, but it was not that hard. But maybe I was wrong because in um, 1965, uh, in August, two years later after that famous speech, uh, we had the Watts riots. And I was living right in the community, not in Watts, but the riots spread down to Long Beach. And I was in the middle of it. We were under martial law and whatever when they would come in and nobody, you know, you're on curfew and Molotov cocktails were being thrown and fires were starting. And it was very frightening, very frightening to see so much anger. And, and sadly, it happened again in 1992, you know, with um, after the Rodney King trial. How did you and your family feel about JFK? Well, we're Catholic, and he was the first, we were Catholic, and so he was the first Catholic president, uh, and running for president, they were all like, like, it was like a miracle. I, to think about how uh, someone, and they, they, they had ideas back then that if you were a Catholic, you would have to go ask the Pope for every big decision you made. It was kind of silly. But yeah, he barely won, but he did win. And so we were very happy. And it was a, and I always had this amazing uh, admiration for his wife, uh, Jackie Onassis, well, which became Onassis, Jackie Kennedy, because she could speak four languages and she was just very elegant, very really cute. elegant, and really knowledgeable and very well educated. What did, how did your family and you feel about LBJ? Oh, actually, I could not stand him uh, because uh, I understand he was a civil rights leader and all that, but uh, he just lied right off uh, about the war. And he would claim in 1964 that nobody would go to war. And, you know, it's the same old thing. There would be some, something that would come up that would force us into a conflict, which always happens. You know, like the Battle of the Maine, you know, for World War One, it just happens. So he was not one of my favorites, no. Uh, although he did wonderful things for civil rights, that war issue was a major issue in my, you know, that changed my life forever. Mm -hmm. Did you support his uh, idea of the Great Society? To a point, like I said, you know, his Great Society was kind of a conflict because he had a Great Society, but then he prom also uh, uh, also promoted the war. And that's why uh, he did not run again in 1968, because he knew he would lose. So you think that that didn't help the U.S. at all? War? No, not the at all. The Great Society. Oh, the Great Society. Yeah, it had, it had a great effect. He's very famous for that. Okay. But this war just overshadowed that for me. You know what I mean? He had to be consistent, not, you know, it was like, it was like he was a buddy with the military. You know? And it was just very sad if he only understood that. He had two daughters. and I sure